Um, can you see my screen? Can someone confirm? Yes, doctor. Okay, cool. Thank you. Okay, um, I've, I've put the, um, the lesson for today uh, in the lesson lectures folder already. Uh, so you can have it there. Um, so actually, last week and this week, we should be um, learning about um, poem uh, loading and also the sync and source relationship. Um, uh, it's meant to be um, spread out uh, between two weeks. Uh, but however, uh, not to worry. Um, if I'll try to finish this um, within two hours, I, sh I don't think it's going to be taking too long. Um, but if if that is not happening, not to worry. Uh, you can refer to the record. <clears throat> okay. All right. Um, so I have received both of your submissions for the photo respiration ebook and also the um, cellular respiration ebook. So thank you for that. Um, I still need to do a bit of marking. So once I have done with the marking, and to make sure that the facts are correct and you you get things um, orderly. Um, each of the ebook will be passed to the opposite group, and the opposite group uh, you will be providing uh, <coughs> with the uh, question sets of question to answer based on um, the opposite topic, meaning that if you are a group. Um, that does cellular respiration, you are going to get question from the group who does photorespiration. Uh, so in this way, you're going to know, I mean like, of course, you are already a master for your assignment topic. Okay, I want you to know um, things comprehensively, all right? Okay, so we're going to continue today about the sourcing journey through um, volume um, transport. Actually, this should be hyphenated. Yeah. Okay. Um, the thing is, it's great that you have learned about this amazing um, food manufacturing process, namely photosynthesis. And also, you know that the plants have organs that can store up these photosynthetes or the photosynthesis uh, products. But none of this would have happened if there is no mechanism that can cater for such a distance of transport because it's not like every single cells in plants are, are capable in doing a photosynthesis and then store it. No, not all cells are photosynthesizing. Okay, for example, like uh, the root cells, <coughs> they can't photosynthesize because in the soil, you don't have one of the key ingredients, namely the, the, the light. And uh, due to that, uh, the roots, must receive the food um, from other organs and this involves some kind of communication uh, to be specific it's a, actually a long distance communication or transport path so that the photosynthesis or other compounds for that matter can reach um, this uh, organ okay so, <clears throat> So, whenever we talk about source, I want you to get the terminology correct. Source is actually any organs, any parts of the plants that photosynthesize or has become a storage organ to the point it is able to redistribute the food to other parts of the plants. Okay, so it can be um, the actively 
photosynthesizing leaves or it can be the storage organs you know like 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 the tuber or it can be um other parts of the plants that have food in them above and beyond than of its needs meaning that it, it needs the food to cater for its own consumption and utilization but it has more so it is able and capable to donate some of it to other needing parts right and then the sink um, terminology um, even though it says here non-photosynthetic organ it actually also encompasses any organs for example leaf it can be photosynthesizing but if it's still relatively young not all part of the leaf is photosynthesizing enough okay it still require food from the more um, mature parts okay so um, in this way um, it can grow and develop much faster right okay so this is the your typical representation of a plant okay now we need, we need to know um how the growing parts uh in your plants are provided with sugar okay for what because sugar that is the source of energy that is also the source of uh your 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 cell building blocks okay right M meaning that you got more sugar you can be more active you can build more stuff right and this is actually thanks to the vascular tissue that runs throughout the entirety of the plants you see plants are not like humans in terms of circulation where plants do not have hearts okay we humans we have the heart as organ that actively pumping um uh, our our blood throughout the cells okay so plants do not have this but it is quite large and actually many plants are much bigger than humans so vascular tissue remember vascular comprises of xylem and also the phloem they need some kind of mechanism to push the contents inside so that it is distributed accordingly throughout the body right <clears throat> so this is um, has actually if if you if you study evolution and if you compare the more primitive plant for example like the bryophyte uh, if you're not familiar bryophyte is is plants like um you know lichen um what's that name um lumut you know the green stuff that you see growing slimily on the on the rock or any any damp surface yeah so these um actually a much simpler uh, kind of plants to the point they do not have this vascular tissue okay so how how they they get around all these nutrients and 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 photosynthesis just through absorption because they are relatively small but the moment when the plants become bigger and more complex it needs some some kind of um veins some kind of conduit or small vessels so that the whole body is properly nourished and this is achieved by having vascular tissue okay so remember xylem um, conducts uh, water and also um, ions um, in, 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 in it while um, phloem conducts um, water sugar hormones and some other uh, organic compounds all right okay and the action of phloem um, sending off food from the mature parts to the growing parts we call it translocation okay phloem translocate the food from the leaf to the roots okay in the context right <coughs> okay so this is a further 
um, definition for the source and sinks. I just put it here and also to put it into a further perspective um, so that you can really grasp um, the definition. All right. Okay. Um, so this is has all been, been covered uh, just, just a while ago. Okay. So you have your actively photosynthesizing leaf uh, up here, which is the sugar source. And through the action of translocation, it sends off this sugar, remember, through what vessels? Phloem, okay? To arrive at the sink organ, which in this case is the root. And, and then the root can uh, assimilate this uh, food for its own um, growth and development process. Right. Oh, in the tongue of my so the flow of water in plants um, is almost from roots um, to leaf. Okay. All right. Uh, we are talking about the xylem now. Okay. We learn about this, right? When you, we learn about the water potential, you learn about the cohesion mm -hmm. and addition, the contact angle and everything about the movement of water in vessels okay so the movement of water which you 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 get from here oops sorry <coughs> water that you get from here will be um transported upwards okay and pretty much that is the way is it the only way no but primarily okay what about uh the translocation of phloem when phloem transport the product of photosynthesis, for example, sucrose, um, the direction um, can be in any way. It can be from down, upward to upward, or from top to the bottom, or laterally from side to side, okay, or even diagonally. Okay, so the transport of um, sucrose in Phloem. Sucrose is um, a type of sugar, okay? Please remember your uh, basic biology. We have simple sugar. We have disaccharide sugar. We have polysaccharide sugar. And sucrose is um, disaccharide sugar, okay? It's the combination of um, glucose and uh, fructose, okay? All right, so let's have a look at here um, the example of the wild beet, Beta maritima. Um, when it's growing during its first season, the root is a complete sink organ, which is the normal understanding that we have now. But when it comes the second season, the roots become a source. Okay, it remobilizes all this nutrient, and now it has uh, become the source. The root now has become the source. All right. In contrast. The, the modern, the cultivated beet, for example, like the beta vulgaris, roots is always the sink organ, despite the developmental phase of the plant. Okay, first season, second season, vegetative season, or, or anything, it is still the sink organ. That's why this particular plant is can be turned into the sugar sauce for us. Okay. Um, I know we are more familiar with sugarcane as our um, pl uh, plants that we use uh, to get sugar from, your table sugar. But, you know, in, in countries like the temperate countries, they, do, they don't have sugarcanes. Okay, sugarcane is C4 plants. So in temperate countries, uh, they use this plant, um, the, the beet plant, the sugar beet plant, right? So this is the wild type of the beet plant. Uh, well, that meaning that it is not um, purposely uh, bred for any specific um, characters. So the first season, the root becomes the um, sink organ. But in the second growing season, it becomes um, the source organ. Okay? But through the extensive work of breeding, now it, the root has become the sink organ throughout the time. Okay, until it is ready for the harvest. You can look, this is the, the, the modern bit, right? Look, it's, it's, it's a lot 
bigger in perspective to the entire plant. Uh, look at look at look at the, the, the root part of this uh, wild beet. It's not as big to the entire part of the plant, but the modern beet that we have in relation to the um, the entire shoot part of the plant, that, that's quite big. Okay. And that's why we commercialize this. <clears throat> Alright. Um, so what about the pathway? I, I, I know I have been talking about it in a very general way. We, we talk about the source to sink um, uh, journey or transport, but not all sources supply sink um, in, in a plant. Remember that the leaf potentially can be a source organ, but not necessarily it supply. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Um, let's let's look at look at this um depending on the location of the sink organ the plant is quite smart it will try to avoid the long distance transport unnecessarily okay therefore due to the proximity the upper na um um not this is not nature okay sorry this is mature Upper mature leaves usually provide uh, photosynthesis product to growing shoot tips, the ones which are closest um, to it. Okay? And the lower leaves simply uh, are providing to the root because this is much closer. Okay? We're talking about the proximity now. And while the intermediate leaves can support in both directions, it's somewhat equidistant. It doesn't matter if I go down or uh, up, it's still the same. And also the development. Okay. Roots and shoots are the major sink during the vegetative growth. And this is true. However, as the plant ch change its developmental phase, entering the reproductive phase, the fruits, the organ, which is not present before this point, has now become the dominant sink during the reproductive uh, phase. Okay? Right. So I've put here, um, this I, I got it from, from a journal, uh, to put things into perspective, what is meant by not all sources are supplying, okay? Organs can be a potential source, but whether it's supply to the um, organ in concern of not, that depends on several factors, okay? It depends on the proximity. Um, whether um, the sink organ is closer or farther from, from it, from the source, or depending on the developmental stage, whether it is a germane um, seedling stage, a vegetative stage, or the green uh, filling stage, or the reproductive stage, okay? So, um, take a look at here. During the germination, um, the source is actually inside the seed itself, the, the endosperm. Okay, so um, the food from the endosperm feeding both the shoot and the root because the shoot, well, it's, it, it can't uh, photosynthesize just yet because it's still a baby. But as the plant grows bigger and more uh, stronger, uh, the leaves can now photosynthesize on their own. Um, so now the root has become um, not only uh, uh, the sink, but also the source. But remember, even though the root now is uh, the source, it's not as strong as this one, okay? Some of the root content can be transported to uh, the sink. The sink here are actually the newly uh, formed leaf, you know, the non uh, the, the steel uh, expanding leaf. The fully expanded leaf uh they now are the source okay so the sucrose uh produced here uh are sent uh, to to the sink here so in this picture here obviously the leaf up here they are not going to send um the the sucrose to to the sink or organ uh, so much but they're going to send it to this organ Okay, until they are big enough 
and that much of the food photosynthesized here can be sent a downward. Okay, but as the plant progresses, now it, it has entered the reproductive stage. Okay, things get more uh, interesting. Look at the roots now. It is no longer uh, the sink organ, completely the source organ because everything now must be channeled to only one organ, which is the reproductive organ. In this case, uh, we have the the um, wheat here, I think. Is it the wheat plant here? Uh, let me think. I think this is the wheat. Yeah. Anyway, this is the grass uh, family. Okay. Because it's got the, the flag leaf. So it can be the wheat or, or, or the, the, the rice. So you can see here, this is a very strong organ, this panicle here. Okay, panicle, that's the inflorescence form for, for um, the flower bunch, for the grass. Uh, the, the spikelets here, each of these spikelets here have become very strong sink organ. Okay, and so it's like, but other organs do not seem to mind. They just send it off. All right. Um, what about um, the vascular connection? What about leaves that have more uh, vessel and leaves that have less vessel? So the reason mature leaves can become a very good source um, organs because they have much better vascular connection. Okay. Um, the big leaf here, everything has um, properly developed and obviously they have a stronger and more um, mature uh, kind of uh, vascular system so they can easily transport the sugar to wherever uh, the sugar needs to go okay and in any case the leaf is connected to the upper region and also in the downward region okay and can the translocation pathway or the vascular connection get modified? Yes. You know, um, plants are subjected, subjected to various um, uh, changes uh, throughout the course of its lifetime. Sometimes due to the strong wind, it breaks. Maybe you go to your plants, you, you, you do some trimming to your plants, you do some pruning of your plants, or maybe you are very keen, avid horticulturist. You go to your plants to do the grafting or, or um, air layering. You can actually change this vascular connection, all right? Meaning that originally that site uh, was um, absent from any vascular connection, but due to various uh, processes like the pruning, trimming, grafting, um, breaking or, and like those kind of things, vascular systems can um, be triggered uh, to, to grow and develop at the new site, right? Okay, um, so before we go further into understanding how the sugar move throughout the plants for this journey, Let's get a couple of terminologies correct. Maybe you have seen this before. It's just a review. Okay. Um, water and also um, so, uh, other kind of solutes moves from cell to cells in a number of ways. If the water moves primarily from cell to cell, this is, uh, I take example here, this is the, the root um, cells, okay? Cells located at, at the root region. If the cells are connected in such a way um, the water or solutes as represented by the green arrows here can move from one cell to another through the, this um, tunnel, the plasmodesmata. We call it the simplastic uh, pathway. The simplas. Simp means join, joining the living regions. Okay. However, the solute and water and solute also able to move through the cell wall. This region here, this is a cell wall region, okay? This here. Remember, 
cell wall is actually uh, porous. Okay, remember you also learned about the um, another terminology, tortuosity. Okay, so when when they they have pores, meaning that um, a substance can get through, not as fast as the simplest, but they are still able to do it. All right. Okay, and there is another kind of um, transport we call it the transmembrane. Okay, and this is uh, primarily for for water. Okay, um, so for the transmembrane, the water gets in the cell wall. So this is the apoplastic. Oh, sorry, by the way, um, if the substance moves through the cell wall, we call it the apoplastic pathway. Right. So we come back to our um, current example here. And um, so if your water moves from the apoplast, the cell wall, and then it penetrates the plasma membrane. So this is your plasma membrane. And then it goes straight. And then instead of going through the plasmodesmata, it penetrate again the plasma membrane here and then it penetrate um the the cell wall here apoplastic again and then it comes here yeah so this course of water how how can it penetrate um the uh, plasma membrane through through a channel okay we call it a quaporin quaporin it's embedded on the membrane on cell membrane you don't get this on the cell wall okay if that is the case, we call it transmembrane. Yeah, yeah. Wherever they go, for this uh, root region, see, this is the root region here. They are going to where? They're going to the xylem. Okay, regardless. <clears throat> and this transport, uh, the terminologies are true for the rest of the plant, not just for the root here. All right. All right. Okay. This looks worrying, right? Uh, what do you need to know? Uh, I I just want to 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 um highlight to you, um, this this thing actually is a very complicated process. Okay, even though you only learn about the symplastic, apoplastic, and transmembrane pathway. In here. Embedded on the surface of the cell wall, embedded on the surface of the plasma membrane. Besides aquaporin, there are many other channels, many other transporter, many other stuff that can prevent the journey of the water and solutes. Okay, it has to go through many other things before it can reach the xylem. All right, so many things just to put things into perspective. So, the journey is to some degree can be quite free from for, for example like the water here and the journey can be quite restrictive uh, especially for the charge molecule or specific molecule because the cells have various of these channels gates um, symporters antiporters pumps that can prevent unwanted stuff from going in yeah so that that is the whole idea. You don't want just anybody to get into your house. You need to be selective. Okay. You can't allow the whole planet to get into your house because you just you just cannot be that good of a host. Okay. You want to be the beneficial ones to get in so that you can do your business and achieve your goals accordingly. Right? So in this uh picture here, um we have uh, the the simulation of the fluxes. Okay, uh, we have the transmembrane here, and also um, we have uh, when you need to utilize a uh, various um, transporters. Okay, not to worry too much about this, just to give you perspective. All right, so you have learned about about what um, how 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 transport in general takes place i mean like what 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 drives it of course you have the salt and sink organ now and also you have the 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 um the component of the cells that allow it 
example of this thing to happen. So what substance that goes through the phloem? So basically, these um, are the list of things that you would commonly find um, if you analyze the sap in the phloem. Not talking about the xylem because very likely you, you're going to get water and also some ions. Okay. So phloem, it's it's more it's more complicated the stuff in it. You got sugar, amino acid, organic acid, protein, calcium, chloride, potassium, and magnesium, and, and many other stuff. Even it doesn't stay here, let me add. R and A. Yes, nucleic acids can also travel. Um, in, in, in the phloem, all right, to some degree, uh, not a lot, all right. So you can, you can see that phloem is very busy. It has to cater the movement of this compared to the xylem, which only has to deal with water, right. However, when we talk about the phloem in terms of source and sink um, relationship, I want uh, you to focus on this. Because this is the, the product of your photosynthesis and it needs to reach the uh, sink organ. One thing you need to bear in mind, um, sugars are not the same. All right? Sugars that are present in the phloem are actually non-reducing sugar because these sugar are less reactive. Okay? What I hope you still remember from, from your uh, biochemistry. So reducing sugar, sugar which are reactive, sugars that have their aldehyde and also the ketone groups exposed in their molecule. Okay, For example, the glucose, the mannose, the fructose. Why, why it has to be non-reducing for the phloem? If the sugar is very reactive, they are reducing sugar. On the way from the source to the sink organ, it's going to interact with just about any everybody along the way. It's very sticky. Okay, you don't want your sugar to high five everyone along the journey. You want it to stay on the task, stay on the line, reach your destination. That's all you want it to have to do. So in order to do that. It has to be a non-reactive, non-reducing sugar. And for that reason, that's why sucrose is the best one. Okay. How can you relate this to your body? Look at this, the glucose. Even plants do not have, do not, do not have, refuse or do not want to have glucose to be transported in the phloem. Because the plants do not want to get um, that diabetic. Because if it's get diabetic, it get a disease that will hamper with its function. Okay. So I hope you can take into perspective the thing here. Why people are when they are diabetic, basically the body is ruined. Why? Because when you are diabetic, that means the glucose in your blood is super high. When this happens, we know that the glucose is very sticky. It reacts with everything. Okay? For example, when the glucose reacts with uh, the proteins, uh, you will trigger this, this special reaction. We call it the glycation. So glycation will cause your protein to become this function. <clears throat> So when, when you have lots of glucose, the more glucose you have, the more glycation you have, so the more damage actually you do to your body. So that's why it is a very good idea, if anything that you can learn from your plants, to have lower glucose control, the glucose in your blood. You will be much happier, right? Okay, so let's talk about the sucrose. Um, when I say that the reactive sugar have their aldehyde and ketone um, functional groups exposed, does not mean that the sucrose do not have the aldehyde and ketone groups. They have, but they are hidden. Okay? Or they are reduced or converted to something else. Okay? 
remember about your glucose, it is a disaccharide sugar. So it's the combination of what? Glucose plus fructose. Okay? So combine these two, you will get a sucrose. In the cells of the plants, there are some other sugars also present. For example, like the galactose. Depending on the number of galactose attached to the base uh, of sucrose, when I say the sucrose base, I am referring to the combination of glucose and fructose. Depending on the combination, if there's only one galactose attached to it, it becomes raffinose. If two, starchios. If three, vervascos. Right, so each of these will make um, the sugar becoming even more uh, less reactive, non-reducing sugar. These are all non-reducing sugar. Later in this lesson, you will find another reason why plants use um, these relatively bigger uh, sugar, not only to to um, actually to to ensure that it is less reactive so that it can reach the destination safely but also actually to prevent the sugar from flowing backwards you see as the um, sugar enters from one cell to the next cell it the, the sucrose will combine with the galactose it will become bigger correct when it has become bigger in in the current um, uh, destination, it is not possible for this uh, bigger sugar, for example, let's say um, the raffinose, to flow backwards because the gate from where it enters originally is not big enough to allow the um, backflow. So that's another reason why we have all this uh, complex sugar um, um, in, in the plant. Okay. All right, so this is uh, a bit more uh, another reason why plants choose um, sucrose, okay? Is sucrose good for you? Um, well, that's another topic, actually. Um, yes and no. Uh, because, uh, because it contains both the sucrose and fructose, okay? Uh, glucose, to some degree, you can handle. But fructose, if you have lots of it, that can uh, put a lot of burden to your liver, right? <coughs> we can discuss about it um, in the class, uh, why, why that is the case. Uh, but uh, for now, let's look. Why plant choose sucrose? Because it's energy dense. Look at this. One milliliter of sucrose will have twice the number of carbon atoms. Meaning that if you have sucrose this much, glucose this much, and the flow is the same, you need to go to the root, let's say two meter, you sucrose need to go to the good, uh, root as well, Two meter. By by the time the sucrose and glucose, let's say that the glucose actually, I know this is hypothetical. Let's say that this happens, the glucose reach the root. The carbons, the carbons atom, which is um the carbon bonds, this is that is the the source of energy. When it reach there, it will have only six carbon. For the glucose, however. For the same amount of energy used for the um, sucrose transport, translocation, you will end up having twice the number, 12 carbon. Okay, so the plant is just being smart about it. Why put more work to transport the same amount of sugar if at the end, I get more energy stored for one sugar than the other. It's better. That's why it's better to use sucrose, right? Yeah. So for the same, um, that's why it says here, for the same osmolarity, twice the energy can be transported per milliliter. Okay. 
because the similarity here, I hope you still remember from your agriculture chemistry, I think you, you took you took the subject. It's in millimole per liter. Right? Yeah. Because sucrose also is a less reactive sugar, it's more likely to survive the journey in the foam. Survive from where? Survive uh, uh, is it is it is it going to burn? No. Survive from reacting with anything. Remember, when the if the sugar reacts with something, it's going to become something else. Okay, like um this here. If the glucose reacts with the protein, you get the uh the glycation product, right? So we don't want it. We don't want other products. We want it as the way it is. Can anything react on the sucrose? Yes. Sucrose can, can be broken down with the action of sucrase or inverse-taste enzyme. However, this is not present in the phloem. So, you're safe there. So, because uh, inverse-taste or sucrase is absent, uh, that's why sucrose can reach the genie very easily. So what about other compounds? Okay, if you can remember that from this list, um, even though um, we only focus on the sugar, remember, always remember, other compounds are also transported um, in, in, the, in the phloem. You've got water, nitrogenous stuff, like the amino acids, amides, protein, and, and so on. Okay, uh, do remember that. How can phloem do this? You need to pay attention to the structure of the phloem now. Remember, we learned this in... Um, when did we learn? Is it the first week or the second week? We learned when we learned about the, the structure of the plant. This is why you need to understand about the structure of the phloem. <coughs> so, phloem, uh, there are two components to it. The sieve elements and also the companion cells. Okay, unlike the xylem, xylem is pretty much the dead structure. Phloem is pretty much alive. Okay, because of these companion cells. Okay, um, the first part of the phloem, the sieve elements or the sieve cells. The reason it's called that way because it is perforated. Can you see the small holes here? It is perforated laterally, and also it's perforated on the uh, on the bottom and also at the top. Okay, so that's why it's called the sieve. You know, like the sieve, sieve, the 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 the, the small mechanical thing. Uh, 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 sorry, the tool thing that people use, um, to make uh the flour finer. I'm oh, sorry, I do not know how how to um how to um draw this. Maybe I can draw draw it. Um, not draw it. Sieve. No, that. Yeah, this thing. Yeah, you use that for bakery, right? Ah, yeah. I was talking about. I was talking about this thing. I don't want to buy it. Yeah, this thing, the flour sieve. Okay, so this is pretty much like your um sieve elements. So you see at the bottom, it's highly perforated. So whatever that comes in here will come out to the other way. It looks so much finer. It it, it lets through stuff to go in through it, okay? I mean, like, as long as the stuff is not big enough to go through um, the holes, right? Okay, right. Okay, um, what else? You also have the companion cells, the second part. The companion cell. So the companion cells, okay, pay attention to, uh, to this because companion cells got various um, um, size. And this is actually the one that will determine how much your phloem is going to transport. This is the cells that are going to receive or refuse to receive any sugar synthesized in the mesophyll cells, right? So it's pretty much alive. So this is your companion cells. It has got um, all the organelles. And some of them even have um, chlor chloroplast uh, events. Okay, there are three types of companion cells. We have the ordinary companion cells, we have the transfer cells, and also we have the intermediary cells. Okay, so um, each of these cells has its own um, 
um, characteristics. Okay, there are, there are still uh, companion cells. Okay, so some companion cell have chloroplasts, like companion cells, uh, uh, type ordin the ordinary type. Some have uh, thylakoids or the finger-like ingrowth. Ingrowth means if um, if this is the regular cells, the cells with the ingrowth look like this. Okay, so we call this ingrowth. The inward uh, growth. Okay, finger-like. See, kind of like look look like look like fingers. <clears throat> For better solute transfer, right? Uh, we also have the intermediary cells. Okay, so this will facilitate why 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 so many types? Okay, each of these types have different perforation levels. Okay, some some have bigger plasmodes mata, some have more plasmodes mata, some um, have more vacuoles and so on. Okay, so to to help you to um, appreciate this, um, I actually have helped you um, to, to summarize this. So we have the three types of companion cells. You write that companion cells. We have the ordinary, the transfer, the intermediary. So uh, these are the, the pictures from the um, PEM. This image here, the micrograph here. Micro graph here from the TEM. Um, TEM is a type of microscopy. It's uh, the full name is um, transmission electron um, microscope microscopy. Okay. So you can see that um, this is your sieve elements here at the middle this guy here maybe i can copy that yep so you have your sieve element here and your ordinary companion cells are the ones right next to it this guy here this guy here this guy here you see it's connected to here uh, not 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 sorry not this one this is uh, intermediary cells. Sorry, 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 sorry. Yeah, this companion cells here. The one in, in gray here. Okay, what about the transfer cells? Okay, the transfer cell, remember, it's a finger light, so it's very easy to, to ID this one. Where are the fingers? This. Can you see the finger? Yeah, can I make this bigger? Yeah, can you see the finger? Yes. These are the ingrowths or the fingers, okay? And this is your sieve elements, okay? This guy here. And finally is your um, intermediary cells, okay? Numerous plasmodesmata connect to the surrounding cells. So find your sieve elements. So these are your sieve elements and this is your intermediary um, cells, all right? Okay. So this is the summary of each of these type, how they differ, okay? So the A is the intermediary cells. Uh, the sugar, uphill sugar movement is very gentle. Predominantly transport what? Sucrose, galactose, and oligosaccharides. So many stuff. How, how is it possible? Because the plasma desmata is large, okay? So you have various of stuff that can be transported through this kind of cell. And the second type is the, the ordinary companion cell, or sometimes some literature called this smooth wall cells. That's why the label is like this. But this is actually synonym to this guy here, the ordinary companion cell, okay? Um, upwheel sugar gradient is actually um, abs absent. If it's on the flat surface, then that's fine, okay? Um, so what, what it transport? It mainly transport the mainly um, sucrose and other sugar alcohols. Why? Because the plasmodesmata is, is a bit smaller than um, the 
um, in terms of the result. And the smallest plus smallest matter you can get from the transverse cells. Very, very small. Okay, only sucrose. Lots of stuff, some stuff, only one stuff, the sucrose. Okay, this is, this is more, um, uh, uh, um, sorry, more uh, specialized. Okay. All right, so let's look at the um, type of sieve elements. Okay, I know we have been talking about the companion cells, um, this guy here. Let's talk about the sieve um, elements. So the sieve elements, first you have your companion cells. Your companion cells will be connected to the sieve elements. What about the sieve element? Is there any type? Well, uh, we can actually distinguish between the sieve elements found in Angiosperm and also gymnosperm. Angiosperms are the, the, the commonly found trees, um, the fruit trees that we have, you know, like your rubber trees, your mango trees, your orange tree, apple trees, uh, these are all angiosperm. Um, gymnosperms are your pine, your Christmas tree, you know, fir, spruce, cedar, and so on, okay? Um, how they differ is um, the sieve plates are open channels, okay, and also the presence of the P protein. The P protein is actually the phloem protein. Oops, sorry, why is it? Phloem protein. Okay, and then the companion cells around uh, are sources of ATP. Okay. Because companion cells are living, okay, so that's why it can provide lots of ATP. Okay, so for the gymnosperm, uh, not so much on the sieve plates. Sieve areas are much uh, smaller, okay, and the pores are blocked with membrane, and there is no P protein or the uh, flowing protein. Albumina cells sometimes function as companion cells, so there's a special type of 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 cells, okay. We're not going to discuss about um, uh, phloem transport in gymnosperm because we are dealing with agriculture. Nine, I think 90% or above 90% of the plants we have to deal is angiosperm. So we focus now on the um, angiosperm, right? Let's talk about this um, phloem protein, the P protein. Sieve elements are under high internal trigger pressure. Why? Well, you got sugar, you got organic compounds, organic acid, mineral salts, and so on. So damage can easily happen. Okay. If it is burst to whatever reason, it will cause. Um, I think in human you have this as well. When, when you have a ruptured uh, vessel, or maybe you have some kind of blockage um in in your um uh, in your vessel we call it embolism okay if your phloem vessel is damaged it will re release the pressure we don't want this to happen okay because it will cause leak we don't want the leak to happen okay what caused it it can be due to the insects okay you know some insects like to uh, feed on the sap, <coughs> feed on the sap. Also, the wind damage, okay? Or maybe just you. You go to the plant, you, plick, you flick your, the plants, you just break the plants because, it, you know, your hands just cannot um, be silent, just like your mouth. You keep on disturbing the plants. So these plants can be very much damaged. So here comes the pea proteins, okay? So the P proteins, you can think of it like the seal or the plug that will um, plug any damage happening to the plant. Okay, seal of damage, sieve elements by plugging up. Okay, and over the time, this is for the short term. Okay, short term. Yeah, if it's bigger. If it's bigger, it will start forming the callus. Callus, okay? So the callus is um, it's, uh, a different kind of uh, stuff. 
it's from this um, uh, this glucan stuff. Um, uh, for much bigger damage, okay, for for a long long term um um solution, all right, okay, so um, how can you relate this to a human? Okay, so pea protein, you can think of it like your uh, platelet, platelet, okay, okay. Um, you know, you have your, um, uh, uh, one of your blood cells that can act as the uh, coagulant at the wound site, okay? But over time, your, your wounds, especially if it's a big wound, it can form like these extra skins on top of your wounds, okay? So, callus is something like the scab. I hope I hope you you know this. Uh, I do not know what why is it called in um in in Malay. Uh, platelet. So you have your platelet. Remember, this is your platelet. When you have the wounds, the platelet will plug in, um the punctured site, pretty much like the phloem protein. But when it's um it's too big, it will form a callus, and callus is equivalent to the scab. Yeah, this thing. What is it called in Malay? I forgot. Yeah. So this is pretty much like the, the callus. Um, here. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Plants can injure too. Plants do not play football or playing hide and seek with your friends. But they too, even though they do not fall, they can get damaged and injured. Right? Alright. So this is uh, to put things into perspective. If you have how you, how the plants uh, deal with this um, pea protein and also the callus plugs, you got your insects here, and you know it will trigger lots of reaction, uh, for the repair to take place. Alright. Yeah. <clears throat> so you can see that these are the callus plugs, and also these are the the pea proteins. Okay. Is it present? Yes, a pea protein present in a small amount in the phloem, uh, but they will be produced more, especially for the callus flux, when damage happen. Okay. All right. So we have seen um what what is in the phloem, how, how what enables the phloem to do the transport. Let's see the mechanism now. Okay. Okay. This, is, this is the interesting part. Remember, okay, this is your sieve elements. This is your companion cells. Companion cells. This is the source cell. And usually it's the mesophyll cell. Okay. One way how the um the journey of the sources sink is accomplished is through the pr pressure flow model okay it this is not your regular osmosis diffusion okay because that is too slow okay so what happens is when your mesophyll cell produce the sugar the sucrose this will go to the companion cells okay so these companion cells, all the red dots are the sucrose, okay? Red dots. So the companion cells will transfer all of these sucrose very fast to the sieve elements. And you see, suddenly the sieve element has a very high concentration of sucrose concentration compared to the adjacent xylem remember okay xylem is is actually uh, next to the phloem okay it's, this is just the illustration that's why you see the gap actually there, there that's not so much gap okay so what happens you have learned your water potential that's why you learn water potential um uh, early because you need to use this uh, here when you have lots of 
um, sucrose in here, this will reduce the water potential. You reduce the water potential, meaning that the turgor pressure is going to increase. Okay, where the turgor pressure is going to um, uh, increase? It's here. Okay, All right? In the xylem. Okay, how does this happen? Let's 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 have a closer look here. Um, so you have lots of sugar in here. This will break down the water potential. The xylem next to it, the water potential, even though it's less negative, even though it is negative, it is more positive compared to this uh, water potential in the phloem because you do not have the sucrose in here. So this is minus 8 megapascal. So the water will move abundantly into the um, sieve elements from the xylem to the phloem. So what will happen then? You will create this high trigger pressure because suddenly you have not only that you have lots of sucrose, but you have lots of water as well. From where the water comes? From the xylem. Why the water comes? Because the phloem water potential is more negative than the xylem. This will create high trigger pressure because now you have two things in abundance. You have lots of sugar, you have lots of water. So this will cause the pressure to cause movement from this, um, from this region to this, uh, the, the, the lower region. Okay? It's like a pump okay? because of this high trigger pressure. I'm pumping it this way. That's why it's called the pressure flow. Yep, that's why it's called the pressure flow. Pressure from lots of sucrose, lots of water flowing because there is a perforation. You see this? Yeah, because this is the sieve elements. It's got the sieve plates. Sieve plates enables the flow. So it will flow where? It will flow to the next sieve elements all the way until it reach the region of the sink cells. In the sink cells, the sink cells can, it's like a magnet, okay? It's like a magnet. It will absorb and receive all the um, sucrose because it's meant to be that way. So all of this, um, sucrose here will go towards this direction. Okay? Yeah. So, if here, this whole um, event here, you call phloem loading. This whole event here. From the sucrose, from the mesophyll, go to the companion cells, go to the phloem sieve cells. <coughs> At the sink region, this whole event here, we call it as phloem unloading. Okay, so the sucrose will leave the sieve elements because now the destination is the sink cell. So what happened to the, um, um, to the uh, water potential now? So because there is an abrupt uh, flow out or the um, flux of sucrose out of these uh, sieve elements, the water potential will be so positive to the point now the xylem has even more um, negative water potential. You see, this water potential here is minus um, minus 4 and the water uh, potential because so meaning that this is more posi positive it's approaching zero this guy here in the xylem the water in here the water potential is minus 0 0.6 megapascal so the water will move now from the phloem to the xylem okay right 
the moment the water in here, it will follow the regular transpiration stream. The water keep, keeps on moving here. Remember from your earlier lesson. Why the water keeps moving here? Due to the capillary action. Due to the what? Addition. Due to the cohesion. Okay? And this is going to go on for, for as long as there's a sucrose to be transported. Okay? So the whole thing, we call it the pressure flow mod model. Right? Okay, so there is um, a lot of explanation already here. So whatever that I have said, actually, this is the explanation. Okay, so that to help you with to 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 review. Okay, yeah. So it's very easy. Um, if you cannot grasp somehow, or you forget what is this fish fork is doing here. Go back to learn your water potential. Okay. Because that's, a, that's why this is very important now, right? Okay. <clears throat> so, um, one thing um, to, uh, to note now is, um, yeah, specific name, okay? Water is moving in the, in the phloem by the bulk flow, okay? No membrane or cross. How come no membrane? Because this is sieve elements. Okay, here, no membrane. Okay, when there is no membrane, we call it bulk flow. When there is membrane, what do you call it? You call it osmosis. Okay, why bulk flow? We just want to make things faster now. Okay, so therefore, in this whole thing, in this pressure flow model, water movement is driven by the pressure gradient. This bulk flow, not water potential gradient, because this is osmosis. No, osmosis is, 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 is not the help now. Okay, because we need to move a lot of stuff now. We need to move the sugar, we need to move um, uh, the, the water abundantly and also abruptly. So a simple osmosis cannot do it. All right. What about the solutes? When I'm talking about the solutes, all the stuff in here, all the sugar in here, where does it come from? If you forget, it actually comes from the triose phosphate. This is the product from your, remember your photosynthesis, your Kelvin cycle, okay? Okay. Triose phosphate is actually your glycerol dehydrate phosphate. It's just the synonym. Okay. I just want you to um to know there are synonym names for this, okay? Triose phosphate. Uh -huh. Okay. So triose phosphate also named as glycerol dehydrate phosphate. Or 3 phosphoglyceride, 3 phosphoglyceraldehyde. They are all referring to the same thing. It's just different names. Okay, and come here. Let me try to make it. Um, Why is it not black, the font? Okay. Glyceraldehyde, 3 phosphate, also known as trice phosphate, or 3 phosphoglyceraldehyde. Okay. All referring to sugar, and these are all 3 carbon. Okay. Okay. So the plants will convert this to glucose, and then they will convert it further into sucrose, and then the sucrose. Then moves from the mesophyll cells to the nearest sieve elements. Okay, and these whole things. I'm sorry if I'm um, obstructing this view. This whole thing here, from the mesophyll cells to the sieve elements. This collectively we call it as the short distance pathway. 
pathway. This guy here. Why? Why short this then? Move two or three cells. Very short. This here, from the source here to the sink here, this we call it as what? Long distance pathway. Okay? Yeah. All right. So, um, to put things into perspective here. So you have your mesophy cells, your mesophy cell producing the sugar, the sugar through the plasmodes mater is going to enter the um uh the companion cells and then the companion cell is going to tr uh, further transfer it to the sieve elements. Okay? Uh right. So the things that you need to pay attention here is we know that sugar is big. We know that sugar, um, sometimes, they, they just cannot pass uh, all this uh, opening very easily. How does it happen? If, if, if you're wondering about that, you are actually correct. <clears throat> because um, the apoplastic pathway is also required, meaning that the movement through the cell walls. Okay? <clears throat> how, how does this happen? Okay, so this is your mesophy cells. This is your companion cells. This is your sieve element cells. Okay, together, these make up what we call as sieve element companion cells complex. Okay, let's zoom in this region here. So we know that this is the cell wall and also. Um, this is the plasma membrane. If you zoom in, in here, you are going to see there is a special sucrose hydrogen symporter. This is the symporter, okay? What is symporter? Sympo it's actually a protein, okay? Symporter is actually a protein. A protein that can transport two things at once. Hence, the word sim together. Uh, I put a small note here uh, in the form of uh, a diagram here. If it's uniporter, the porter here can only transport one thing. We call it uniporter. If it can transport two things, like the case of sucrose um, uh, hydrogen or proton symporter here, it can transport the sucrose and hydrogen here. We call it symporter. If it's cat, uh, if it gives uh, permission to transport in one thing and also to transport out one thing, we call it antiporter, right? They are, they are still porter. Okay. Right. So what happens here is the symporter here, they, they are able to do uh, the sucrose transport because there is a buildup of hydrogen um, in the in the cytoplasm of your mesophyll here. Why? Uh, because um, on the other side um, of, of the um, membrane, um, I'm sorry, not, not the mesophyll. Here is the uh, cell wall. Okay. So this is rather acidic because of high um, um, hydrogen here. So the active pumping of hydrogen from this side to the this side is causing hydrogen imbalance and this hydrogen must be transported back to the low hydrogen concentration to make this happen this importer can only work when two things are being transported at the same time so hydrogen needs to go out as well when hydrogen is coming out this sucrose can take this advantage to go out as well. Okay, so the more hydrogen that you have on this side, the more hydrogen will come out to this side. When the more hydrogen needs to come out, the more sucrose will follow the right. The more sucrose will tag along. Okay, meaning that the more hydrogen you pump in the first place, the more of everything will go uh, consequentially. Okay, so you need lots of ATP to do this, right? Yeah. Okay, 
let's look at this uh, volume loading, right? So this is the uh, bundle shift cells. Uh, and then you can see here in the intermediary cell, remember intermediary cell is a type of companion cells, okay? It's a one type of companion cell. Look at here. In the bundle shift cell, you only have your glucose and you have your fructose. They all go into the intermediary cells. In the intermediary cells, the glucose and fruit, uh, fructose, which has been converted to the sucrose, the sucrose now is attached to the glucose. One unit of glucose, sucrose attached to the glucose, now you get raffinose. Raffinose, can it go backward? No, this is much bigger now. It just cannot fit this opening. However, it can f go through the, um, the entry here into the sieve elements because the tunnel that you have over here is much larger. So that's why the raffinose can get into the sieve elements. All right? And also why? Raffinose is non-reducing. It's big, it's non-reducing. So perfect for the long distance transport. Okay. And this is the um, description, okay? <coughs> All right. Um, can it be other thing? Yeah. Depending on the number of galactose attached to the sucrose. Um, if you recall back from this slide here, the earlier slide, one galactose to sucrose, you get raffinose. Two galactose you get to sucrose, you get starches. Three galactose to sucrose, you get your verbascose. Right? Are they sweet? Of course they're sweet. They're sugar. Can you taste it? That I'm not sure. That depends on your, your mouth. You know, some sugar uh, some people do can taste um sugar, uh table sugar sweet. It depends on your receptor. I might not be able to taste raffinose or stachio sweet, but I know some people can do that. We are different, we are colorful. Some people got the mutation in their taste buds or some, something. All right? Okay. Um, so I put here um, to, to, to show you what happens at the volume loading. All right? If you are lost, you go back here. Um, sorry, here. Remember, for the sink source transport, you need two things to happen now. You need the phloem loading and also you need the phloem unloading. Now we are at phloem loading. Okay? okay. And it, it's done through the symplastic phloem loading. Why it's called symplastic? Because it goes through the plasmodesmata, the tunnel here. Okay? The tunnel here. The size of plasmodesmata here smaller this one is bigger right okay so let's look at this from from a journal uh this figure here phloem loading uh, mechanism it can be apoplastic phloem loading meaning that um uh, the, the the sugar here from the uh, parenchyma uh, cells the pp here to the companion cells to the sieve elements, it goes through. Can you see any any plasma desmata? No, this blue here. This is the plasma membrane. It goes through the. Ah, uh, sorry, it's not a plasma membrane. It's the cell wall. <coughs> sorry, it's the cell wall. What's wrong with my pen? Cell wall. Cell wall. Okay. The moment it enters cell wall and go through it. Automatically, that is apoplastic foam loading. All right. So, what about these? These are the uh, the porter, okay? The the transporter, okay? So you we have the sweet uh, transporter and also the sucrose. Uh, these are force for sucrose transporter, okay? What about the second way? The second way. So the first way is the apoplastic foam loading. The second way is the polymer trapping. This is a condition involved. This actually is this guy here. This guy here is actually this B here. From the bundle shift cells, 
you have your sucrose transported to the companion cell, intermediary cell, and here the sucrose is converted to the raffinose. It's called the polymer trapping because it is trapped. Your raffinose is a polymer. It is trapped, it cannot go backward because it's big. The only way out is through this way, which is bigger uh, plus more than smarter. So it is trapped only one direction. Right? Okay, and finally is C passive phloem loading. Okay, this is um this here require ATP, okay? Just like here. Just like here. You require ATP. You got your sucrose um, hydrogen uh, symporter. There are many other symporter. Have I mentioned them all? No. Why haven't I mentioned all? There are so many of them. These are another another uh, 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 porters that, that are involved. Okay. Um, so suc uh, 2 is the sucrose hydrogen trans um, trans uh, symporters that you have seen bef uh, before. And we have also the sweet transporter. There are so many uh, uh, porters here, right? And final, the final type for your uh, for the phloem loading is the passive phloem loading, all right? Why passive? No ATP. Through what? Completely through the plas plasmodesmaster. So we can know this is the symplasmic pathway. Okay. Okay. So this is just the um, summary of what's happening. You got the sieve elements unloading, you got your short distance transport, and also um, uh, the storage and metabolism. This is to unload. Uh, we'll we'll have a look at the unload in a bit. Okay. So you have learned two things now: this unloading, and also the short distance transport. Now it has about to reach the destination. It needs to un unload now. How does it unload? It can be symplastic or it can be apoplastic, okay? If it's symplastic, this is your sink cells. It's completely uh, through plasmodes matter. No cell wall journey involved. If it's plas apoplastic, it involves some kind of cell wall movement. Why? Can you see any, any tunnel here? No tunnel. No tunnel, detour. Detour. Oh. Maybe go back in here. Oh, there is a tunnel. And then it can go straight to the sink organ. Okay. Then it arrived. All right. <clears throat> okay. Um, so simplate is quite easy. It's very straightforward. You know, it's completely through plasmodes mata. About the apoplastic. Apoplastic, you've got a, a few types. You've got the, the type 1. So this is the short distance pathway, um, because how many cells here? One, two, three. This is only 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 more or less uh, very 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 few very few cells here. So that's why it's called the short um, distance. Okay, and what about um, the other two types? How how they are actually uh, differ. So this guy here, this is the regular apoplastic. Okay. It uses the apoplastic, and the rest of it is the symplastic. So you got your apoplastic here, symplastic here, symplastic here. In the second type, second two A type here, you have your um, symplastic here because of plasmodes mata. You have your apoplastic here. You have your symplastic here. Okay. In the 2B types, you have the symplastic here, the symplastic here, but just before it, there is no plasmodes mata. So you are forced to, I mean, not you, the sucrose is forced to use the apoplastic. Okay. So um, that's only how I, 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 I memorize this thing. When I was a student, apoplastic, symplastic, 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 apoplastic, symplastic, 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 apoplastic. Okay, that's just uh, two types. All of them still apoplastic because at 
one point or another during the journey of unloading, it involves the cell wall journey. Okay. All right. Whoa. What is this? <clears throat> oh, so this is the uh, simplest, simplest, sim. Is it simplistic or simplistic? Um, I have seen both. So you, um, I'm not a linguistic kind of teacher. So if you write both, I will accept that. Okay. Uh, simplistic or simplistic. Okay. Maybe you can check on on uh, in in dictionary later. Is it simplistic or um simplistic? Uh, I've seen more simplistic actually. <clears throat> okay, so simplistic unloading uh, and also apple plastic unloading. Simplistic completely. This is your sucrose. Sucrose from where? From your phloem. This is your sink. Using your plasmodes mata. Apple plasmic loading, you have your phloem go to the plasmodes mata, but you are forced to use the cell wall. So this is apple plastic. Okay? Yeah. So this is further to help you. Some uh, of this phloem unloading use energy, some do not use energy. Okay. If it's simplasmic, not much energy is is used. Okay, um, it just it just it just a, a regular transport. Okay, but if it's um, uh, a poor plastic, you need you, there is a more resistant to 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 the journey. You need to use lots of ATP. Active transport into tonoplast requiring direct use of ATP. All right. Yeah. So, in this um. Uh, simplasmic pathway ATP is used as well, but it's used in the more more into the uh the sink organ, okay, rather than from the beginning. All right. So um here is the summary uh, that you can um read later. So um the pathway of the translocation you have sugars and other materials are translocated using the phloem loading. So it's very important. Okay, it doesn't matter. How how good your plants do the photosynthesis? It can be the highest in the world if it fails to transport the photosynthesis. Nothing much is going to happen. Okay, right. So patterns of translocation, right? Phloem usually mature leaves to the sink. Okay, from the mature leaf or the um leaf that has lots of food to the um immature parts of the or the baby parts okay so besides sugar you also have the amino acid protein organic ions and also hormones and rate of translocation is uh, this you need to remember is not um, number one is not regular osmosis okay this is the bulk flow okay and this is uh, quite quite rapid one meter per hour. It's very rapid. Okay, so another uh, of the summary uh, between the apple plastic loading and also the sim plastic loading. Apple plastic loading it can only deal with sucrose, only one thing. Can it uh, deal with uh, with a more complex polymer like the raffinose? No. Other kind of oligosaccharide go to sim plastic uh, uh, path, uh, loading, please. Okay, uh, type of companion cells for the apoplastic uh, involved are the ordinary companion cells or the transfer cells. Okay, for the simplastic loading, intermediary cells, number of stomata, very few, very abundant. Okay, so this is faster. So this is the uh, depiction here. So um, you can see that only few plasmodesmata, lots of plasmodesmata. Right. So, what plants does it happen? Um, yeah. So these are actually not a fixed uh, information. Okay, it changes from species to to species. But more or less, um, for the trop tropic tropic plants or tropical plants, like what we have here, um, we have uh the simplastic loading a lot because um tropical plants produce lots of sugar. It needs to get where it needs to go very fast. Okay, temperate 
and arid regions, um, the change of the environment it's it, it's more gradual. So a poor plastic uh, pathway, uh, to some degree, is also uh, sufficient to transport uh, the sugar from one place to another. They also have uh, the same plastic, uh, but uh, apple plastic also contribute to the transport. Okay, all right. So again, to help you with uh, distinguishing between sim plastic and loading, and also the apple plastic um, loading. Remember, apple plast is majorly for the sucrose. Okay, you need energy. Okay, sim plast. Sucrose and other stuff because it's big, got big plus more this matter. Okay, it, it deals with uh, raffinos and starchios. All right, so this is the uh, another just I, f I found it just to, to get um, uh, for a review. Uh, what happens for the pressure flow? Remember, put this into step. Okay, one, what happened, two, what happened, three, what happened, four, what happened. Okay. So, obviously, 1 and 2 referring to the volume loading. Okay. So, number 3 referring to the volume unloading. Number 4 referring to the water recirculation. All right. <clears throat> so, uh, again, another uh, summary for you so that uh, you can remember this. I know uh, to most of you, maybe this is the first time you have seen this kind of, of, of concept. So, it's good to read about it from different angles over and over again. Okay. All right. So, um, yeah, I think um, that is all for today. <clears throat> yeah. Yay. What time now? Okay, we got time. All right. Um, so any question? Uh, I'll be around here until... Uh, let's give you a few minutes. I'll be around here until 9.40, okay? If you've got, if got any question, just shoot. Jordan? Yeah? Uh, you've mentioned earlier that uh, temperature effect can... Uh, effect translocation, but yeah. is it uh, is it uh physically can damage the tube or does it link with uh water? Um, or how can temperature affect the flow from translocation? Temperature number one, if it's too cold. You see, cold water move slower, okay? If you look, at, look back at uh, your earlier lesson, you can see that high temperature water will move slower. Look at the, the, the surface tension, okay? The surface tension of um, warmer water is actually higher. So when you have high temperature, how does it affect your flow loading Num number one um, high temperature is actually associated with um, arid condition so you you get less moisture in the soil when there is less moisture the bulk flow cannot happen very easily okay not only that, the, the water having a hard time to go up, the stomata are also closed. So you have less water going this direction. When there is less water going this direction, there is less water available to go into the phloem to create the bulk flow. Okay? So that's why if the temperature is too high, the phloem um, translocation here is going to be slower down. Is it going to stop? No, it's not going to stop. It's going to be slowed down because, because of the water, pre the presence of water in the xylem here. 
less water going upwards, stomata closed, less transpiration stream, and also the surface tension is uh, higher. Okay, it's a bit higher, but the effect can be uh, cumulative, right? Does that answer your question? Uh, yes, because okay. I thought uh, the temperature would physically damage the flow. So it, it shouldn't be. Lah. How high? If you if you high temperature, nah, okay. you, you burn it, of course you damage the whole plant. Mm -hmm. okay, okay. Thank you, Doctor. So you got five minutes. Um, I'll linger around till nine forty. Okay. Tomorrow, do we have uh lab? Yeah, just go to your lab. That fish you. Yes. Okay. Uh, doctor, can I ask uh whether the other mechanisms such as the electroosmosis and the cytoplasmic streaming included in the pressure flow, or is it a different mechanism? Pre pressure flow, as it says here, no mem membranes are crossed. If you are uh, talking about cytoplasmic stream, cytoplasmic is bounded by what? Plasma membrane. So, no. Yeah. Yeah, so um, this is the bulk flow like the water in pipes, so to speak. Yeah. So it can it can move um freely with minimum obstruction. Cytoplasmic stream when cells are connected, living cells. These here are pretty much empty. It's like a bamboo, you know, bamboo? It's pretty much empty. From here to here to here, the the living part is in the companion cells. Okay, so it's a combination of the living part and non living parts. Okay, does that answer your question, or do you have something else? Uh, no, I think that's it. Okay. Okay, um, I think if, if you do not have any, any more further question, I think that's all for today. So thank you for joining in. Um, I'll see you tomorrow uh, at the lab. Um, I, need, I, need, I need to have a word with, with Encik Aris first about, about your activity. Yeah, and, and we'll, we'll discuss about it uh, tomorrow in the lab, okay? Because I need to check whether they have... Um, uh, uh, the, the materials that I ask uh, or not. Because if it's possible, I want to teach you how to um, quantify pigments 
yeah, we, we're going to learn how to do the pigments quantification. All right. Okay, so that's all for today. I'll see you tomorrow. And thank you for coming. Bye. Yeah, Welcome. Thank you, Doctor. Welcome. Thank you, Doctor.